Welcome to War Thunder with Subdude. How y'all doing today? Well, let's talk about things to come. We've got a new update coming sometime soon, I would suspect. Uh, I've had some people say, it's not going to be 2.01. Yeah, well, guess what? It'll probably be 2.01 because they've already gotten up to 1.99. So, what would I like to see? Well, I'm not sure that it's going to come in 2.01, but in the second iteration, 2.0, if you will, uh, and what goes beyond that, 2.01, 2.03, etc. What I'm looking for is seed. Suppression of enemy air defenses. Now, some of you might be going, but, 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 we don't have that. Yeah, you're right, we don't have that. And you're probably going, well, you don't have beyond visual range air-to-air -air, air missiles. No, you don't. No, really, you don't. Um, you want to get in close and personal and beat each other up. Let's be honest. You guys don't get your jollies from firing a missile from 15 kilometers out where the other guy doesn't even see you and knocking him out. Now, it might make sense if you're taking out bombers, but beyond that, no. What I want to see is I want to see the AGM-45 and possibly another. But the AGM-45 Shrike is what I would consider the best of what we need. Now, you might be wondering what, what do I need the Shrike for? Well, let's just put it like this. There were... 21 variants of the AGM-45. And you're probably going, 21 variants? What in God's name did they need 25 different versions or 21 different versions of the uh, Shrike for? Well, here's just a short list of the different radars that the Shrike could go after. Fire can, fan song, Many variants of that. Barlock. Uh, low blow. Flat face. Straight flush. And of some of them, there were multiple variants of those. Different bandwidths, different frequencies within a bandwidth. And they needed a specific seeker head on each weapon to find that particular target. Now, how did they figure all this out? Well, that's what ELINT planes were for. If you don't know what ELINT, that's electronic intelligence. What they would do is they would go up there and they would listen for the different radars to see what is it showing up where. And they would pinpoint these radars. And then they would develop a plan of action. A attack profile, if you will. Where a package of aircraft would be detailed to go into an area to destroy a target. And that's still done today. What they would do is they would pinpoint each of the radars. And... Back in the day, those radars were not very mobile. They would get a list of them, and then they would pass that list to the wild weasels. Well, the wild weasels ranged anywhere from the A-4 Skyhawk, the A-6 Intruder, the F-105G Thunder Chief, the F-4G Phantom II, and believe it or not, Britain, you got one, the Avro Vulcan. Yeah. 
Only one platform was ever modified to carry the Shrike for Britain. And only one plane. Now, you're probably still sitting back going 21 different variants of the same missile. Well, not exactly. You had several different ones, but you had an A and a B. Now, the AGM-45A was rated for 16 kilometers, which would be a relatively short range. AGM-45B variants were rated for 40 kilometers, a bit better standoff range. Now, modern day weaponry, that wouldn't fly at all because modern surface-to-air missiles have a range of 400 kilometers. But, back in the day, the SA-2 didn't have that great a range. And once it got jammed, it was a fire-and-forget because it just was going to go flying off as a telephone pole standing on fire. If it got lucky and hit something, well, it was probably shooting at a B-52. But those were the first anti-radiation missiles. And in War Thunder, that would be a good thing for us to start with. Warhead on each of them, you had a 67.5 kilogram warhead and a 66.6 kilogram warhead. That's a lot of boom. It's going to take out whatever it hits. And it's going to make a lot of shrapnel because they were annular blast warheads basically they just threw out shrapnel everywhere but that would be a good start and woe be it to the Tunguska that gets in the way or the ZSU-23-4 that gets in the way of one of these shrikes because it will just blow the living bejesus out of them now there is another weapon that we could possibly see and that would be the AGM-78 the standard missile now we're talking about a much larger missile and the only platforms that carried it were the uh, F-105G and the A-6B or E intruder. That missile had a 90 kilometer range, which would be basically across the map. And it had a 97 kilogram warhead. Basically, it was ta they took the RIM-66, which is a naval anti-aircraft missile, replaced the electronics with the passive radar-seeking electronics, and air-mounted it. Put it on an airplane and said, go shoot them down. The... AGM-78 was around from 1967 through 1975. So, it had a relatively long life, and then it was around for about a decade afterwards before it was finally replaced by the AGM-88 ARM missile. 
and the harm has a 150 kilometer range. Still not a patch on the um, modern surface to air missiles which have a 400 kilometer range. But much better than anything that proceeded. And with stealth, they can get in a lot closer. But we're not dealing with stealth here. We're dealing with Gen 2, Gen 3, and maybe into Gen 4 aircraft. But that's what I'd like to see in the version 2 point whatever. Because Gaijin's moving forward, surface forces are, ground forces are getting much more powerful, much more modern. Uh, aviation needs to keep up, and naval forces need to keep up, which means surface to air missiles for naval forces. I already mentioned one, the RIM-66. And there's going to be others. And anti-ship missiles. We're going to see those in the future, I'm sure. Um, probably be looking at stuff like the Exocet and the... Uh, Harpoon. So, what do y'all think? This sub dude sign out. Y'all have a pleasant today, a better tomorrow, and we'll catch you in the sky and air realistic on the good maps. Thanks, folks. Bye.